Hello. Uh, this video is going to cover the generate C# -sharp class uh, option on the input action asset of the new input system, uh, and some of uh, my personal best practices uh, for how to go about using it. Uh, so just to review really quickly, uh, character actions uh, in this example series is something that defines a move, a jump, a use. Uh, move is bound to a WASD on the keyboard, jump is space, use is E, uh, so on. Uh, jump is defined as a press and release uh, interaction action, uh, and uh, use is a press and hold uh, for two seconds before we actually get the action. Uh, so, uh, when you generate a C -sharp class from the input action asset, uh, it creates a class for you uh, called character actions. Um, and in that class, you will have a definition for your control schemes, your action maps, and your various actions. Um, so in this case, I named my action map default. So inside of here, we will have a strongly typed reference to default. Uh, so let's dive into uh, character control input. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, kind of a get and keep a reference to an instance of our character actions uh, class that was generated. Uh, so it generated a new class called character actions with a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, I'm going to call that actions. Uh, and on start, uh, I'm going to initialize it by doing a actions equals new character actions. Uh, I want to uh, step back just a moment and say that uh, if you notice, there is no player input uh, on our character object uh, because this generate C# -sharp class option is incompatible with player input altogether. Um, they do not really, they're not designed to talk to each other. Uh, so if you're using player input, this is just stop watching this video. Uh, and anyway, once we have a new instance of our character actions, uh, we need to enable the relevant actions. Um, so in this case, uh, we only have one action map, so we could do a actions enable, and now the input system would be looking for all of those bindings. Uh, we could do actions default dot enable. Uh, and this would only enable the actions inside the default action map. Um, so for the context of this video, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and now that those are enabled, it will be responding to that. So inside of uh, fixed update, uh, we want to uh, listen to the joystick, listen for the jump button, uh, so on and so forth, uh, or subscribe to callbacks because it works uh, very similarly. Okay, so to pull for a joystick, uh, the way we were doing this before was with a callback called on move uh, and either an input and action context, uh, context callback, or through a send message or through a unity event, so on. Um, but now that we have the C sharp class, we can do strongly typed. So we can do actions default uh, move uh, read value, and we know it's a vector two. Um, so we're going to try to read it as a vector two, uh, and we still have our uh, move vector cached up here, um, but this is a vector two, so I'm going to pull it in as a local variable called vec, and then assign move vector dot x equals vec dot x and move vector dot z equals vec dot y. Um, so now we've got motion on our character. Worker. Uh, diving into jump, um, and this is where things get a little more interesting. Um, jump is still a callback based uh, action. There's no way to pull uh, super cleanly uh, whether or not it was on down or on up. Um, so I I typically either write some extensions to help manage it uh, or try to make my code a little bit cleaner uh, by storing the should jump uh, somewhere else. 
uh, but uh, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. In your input system package settings, uh, your update mode can be set to either uh, dynamic update, fixed update, or manually. So if you do want to pull uh, your inputs, uh, your button inputs, uh, inside of fixed update or update, make sure you pick one or the other or use the manual update and do it yourself, um, then you can. And the way to go about doing that is check whether or not the action was triggered. So if the action was triggered uh, and the action value uh, was greater than some value, this is where it gets a little hairy. Um, if you have a press point on an analog trigger, like right trigger or left trigger, uh, and your press point is set to 0.5, this method doesn't actually account for that. Um, but for the sake of like face buttons, start button, that kind of thing, uh, this is totally fine. So if our action is triggered and our read value is greater than zero, this is the same as the get button down behavior. Uh, so now we could do a velocity.y equals jump speed, and we get a jump. Uh, oops, we forgot one thing. Uh, we want to make sure we're on the ground before we jump. So if character controller is grounded uh, and uh, jump is triggered and jump uh, is greater than zero, then we jump. Uh, and the reason we have to check for this again is because we're triggering on both press and release, so triggered would be fired twice, um, once when the button is pressed and once when the button is released. Jump. Can't fly. Good. Works as intended. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to cover uh, an extension uh, method that I like to use to deal with buttons specifically uh, that removes a lot of this this code that you need to write and kind of gives you more of the old input manager functionality. Uh, so we're going to effectively re-implement get button down and get button up uh, in a new script. Call it input action button extensions. Uh, and this will be a static class because it will contain extensions. And it will use the input system. Uh, so I will create a new method uh, called get button. Uh, that checks whether or not a button value is greater than zero. Uh, again, this would fail for a trigger that you are waiting for the half, uh, half to press point, um, but for most buttons, this gets the job done. Uh, and I'm also going to write a get button down. Uh, and in this case, we will do a uh, return true if action dot triggered and value is greater than zero. So we just push the button and it was triggered on this frame. And we will also make a get button up. And we will check to make sure that action read value is equal to zero, meaning the button is not pressed. And again, same issue if it's an analog trigger, this doesn't work out too well. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, get button down and get button up only function when the press interaction is functioning correctly. Uh, normally you would get button down every time, but you would never get a get button up because action triggered only occurs when the press interaction uh, also includes the release trigger. Uh, just to be clear, that means this. Um, so you could effectively disable that particular actions up or down or both behavior. Uh, by setting these. Um, and press point is set 
hiding in here in the interaction. Uh, and I'm not actually sure what the easiest way to access that is, so it's hard to build into those uh, static extensions. Uh, but anyway, uh, now that we've got these guys in place, uh, we can go back in here and implement this a little simpler. We can do a if character is grounded and actions default jump get button down velocity y equals jump speed. Uh, and now we have a much cleaner, more universal way to uh, do inline uh, input controls uh, similar to the old input manager. And there we go. See ya.